as if finding cross-site scripting vulnerabilities wasn't already hard enough, in some cases, it gets even harder. Introducing BlindXSS. With BlindXSS, instead of seeing results, in a lot of cases, you can't see whether your attack was successful or not. Now, that's not always the case, as we'll see, because there can be some ways around that depending on the situation, but the point of it is that it's not as easy as just refreshing the page to see whether your attack worked or not. Let's take a look at an example with a case study about a bug bounty program that earned a guy named Sam Curry $10,000 for finding a blind XSS vulnerability after cracking his Tesla's windshield. When Sam first started looking around for potential vulnerabilities, he wasn't really finding much. At one point, he even renamed his car to this payload of script source zlz.xss.ht, which is a payload generated by XSS Hunter, a tool that can help with blind XSS that we'll take a look at later. Now, Sam still couldn't really find anything interesting and completely forgot that he changed the name of his car. But a few months later, he went on a road trip and a huge rock came from nowhere and cracked his windshield. So he contacted Tesla support through the Tesla app and set up an appointment to have it fixed. The day after, he received a text message about the issue. He checked his XSS Hunter and saw something interesting. One of Tesla's agents responding to his request had fired his XSS Hunter payload from within the context of one of their domains. Now, they redacted the domain, so we don't know what it was, but it was a subdomain of teslamotors.com. And the page that was used and vulnerable contained vital statistics about his vehicle, and he quickly realized that it was from a dashboard that Tesla employees would use to manage Tesla vehicles for support, and that while Sam didn't attempt this, he thought it was possible to guess other users' car IDs and pull up their car's profiles to not only access the same statistics about their cars, but also potentially modify configurations. So Sam promptly warned Tesla about the issue, and they pushed a hotfix within 12 hours, and then paid him $10,000 within two weeks. So let's recap exactly what happened here. Number one, Sam changed his car's name to be an XSS payload that was generated by a tool called XSS Hunter. Then, the payload was triggered when a Tesla employee accessed his car's information via their internal support tools in order to assist the customer months later. After that, the payload communicated back with the XSS Hunter tool, triggering an alert for Sam to look into it. When Sam pulled up his XSS Hunter, he realized that he took a screenshot of the page and forwarded all the information that it gathered when the payload was triggered. And this is a great example of a blind XSS attack. They're not considered a different type of XSS attack because they typically rely on a stored XSS vulnerability, but what makes them different is that the attacker has no idea whether the XSS payload was successfully stored or if and when it will ever be executed. The attacker just has to wait and see if the payload gets pulled out of storage and rendered on a web page loaded by a user. And this makes blind XSS a flavor of persistent XSS, and it needs some kind of technology to listen for if or when the payload ever gets triggered. And as in this example, it could literally be months or even years before something gets triggered, or it could never get triggered, you just don't know. If you'd like to read more case studies on blind XSS, definitely check this link out. Ironically, it's actually from the same author, and I found it very interesting. Then go ahead and complete this lesson and we'll move on to the next.